Oh, goodness me. And Aina Hardwick, who plays murderer Benfield in the series, is joining us now. Now, The Sixth Commandment, as we were just discussing whilst watching that, is based on a true story. Now, this, I cannot wait to get my teeth stuck into this later. But this obviously makes for a, a brilliant series. But the fact that it's a true story just seems so otherworldly. Were you aware of that when you got asked to play Ben? The, the story I was probably vaguely aware of. I think it was, it, 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 living in Ireland, it was less of a story. And then I remember when I, the audition came in, it sort of jogged my memory. And I watched the documentary, uh, Catching a Killer, which Brian Woods, the executive producer of Sixth Commandment, um, made. And that kind of, I got acquainted with it that way and was just horrified um, and appalled by it. And um, read Sarah's scripts and thought she had done a brilliant job of, you know, capturing an essence of what happened. And, um, yeah, so that was my kind of start point mm -hmm. when we began the auditions. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Ben Field, he, he was... Um... He, he was a, a, a psychological manipulator. Oh. He's been described as pure evil. He murdered both victims, Peter and Anne. What was it like getting into the mind of somebody like that? It was, I mean, it's strange. You're, it's, a, it's, it's, it's something that has happened and you're playing somebody who's done appalling things mm -hmm. and that is different from anything I've done before. So it, I guess that's the kind of crux of your challenge is to, is to play, you know, to play this person, to serve that story, you have to do it from the inside out. You have to play them as they saw themselves. And that's the kind of challenge of it. But I, I was very lucky, you know, Sarah has written a remarkable script. Mm. You know, she worked with Peter and Anne's families in the kind of genesis of the script. So I always felt like I was in a very strong foundation. Um, and I just, you know, poured into that, poured over it and had lots of research to do after that. So. I sh should say he's only convicted for Peter's, Peter's murder. Yes. Mm -hmm. He wasn't actually convicted for Anne's mm -hmm. murder, convicted was he? Convicted for the will fraud of Anne Warren Martin, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It, it just, as you say, you kind of, as, you know, someone that isn't an actor, you wonder how you get your sort of, how you get your teeth stuck into that, how you get yourself into that mindset. Mm. And it's not only the fact that you've got to go there in, you know, in, into what is a really evil, evil person, but the accent, the accent yeah. is, is brilliant. Like it's so, it's so strange hearing you talk like this and watching that trailer. It's yeah. so brilliant. Oh, well, thank you so much. I, I had a great uh, dialect coach, um, Emma Stevens Johnson, and she she worked with me. And you know, with, with anything like that, it's it's both the accent and it's also the voice and what that tells you about a person and mm -hmm. I suppose the insights that gives you. So, yeah, there was a lot of prep to do. There was a lot of sort of research to be done, a lot of thinking. And then when it got to filming, we were lucky. It was just it was such an incredible team. Mm -hmm. we, we were in the hands of a really brilliant director. Um, so you know, it was. There was a lot of work to be done before we got there, but once we did, actually, you're in such safe hands. Yeah, of course. Um, you said Sarah Feltz, the writer, spent a lot of time with the family. Um, how important was it to her to get this story um, right? You know, because it's, it's very, very sensitive, mm -hmm. isn't it? Is it we, we're looking yeah. at it as entertainment, and exactly really, that. is this is yeah. true life? This is a true story that you've had to portray. Well, exactly, and it's so recent, and so you know, I think there's no way you could do this then without you know. Um, you know, Peter's brother, Ian, and his uh, sister-in-law, uh, Sue Farker, uh, and more Martin's niece, Amory Blake, they were I involved and cooperated with Sarah in the kind of writing of it. And I think um, if, if, if anyone, if you see Sarah speak, you see that she is incredibly passionate. She speaks from the heart and she writes that way as well. So the intention behind it had to be that, you know, there's no other way you could tell this mm -hmm. story. And her intention was always to, to foreground Peter and Anne's lives, as well as their deaths, and 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 to you know to show you these two remarkable individuals um, and complex individuals, and I think that was her intention. And 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 Saul, the director, he's um, he did it in Saul's Rick Poisonings. I don't know if you've seen that, but he, he finds this yeah. amazing way of of telling you this true story and personalising it and making sure that you you know the victims, Peter and Anne, are are, are sort of always at the forefront of it. Yeah. Um, so. There's no better person to, to, to make it, really. And she did, you know, scrupulous research and, and like, really rigorous kind of research to, to get this right. And how about for you? Because you were away in Bristol for three months working on this. How, was it nearly impossible to switch off of an evening when you're in that headspace? And you're sort of... you were, Am I right in saying that you were filming this in sort of real time, in order 
of events. Roughly, yeah, more so than you normally would. We were kind of doing it chronologically, which is very helpful. Mm. Um, it, it was difficult to switch off from the story because I think that's what you want, really. You want to be, um, when it's something you care about, you want to give it your all. Yeah. You want to give it every second. And, um, I, you know, I find it like... I find it hard, I suppose, you come back in the evenings and you're just thinking about the next day. You're just yeah. thinking about the scenes for the next day and, and what you've got to work on and how you can improve. But I think everyone was kind of on that page. And yeah. There's, y you have that with any bit of work, but I think when there is this added responsibility, yeah. you just, you know... Well, Aina, in the court scene, they actually read out the real no, words that were true to life. I mean, less, how did yeah. that make you feel when they're reading exactly the same words that they were in the court yeah. that day? It was, it was strange because, you know, throughout the shoot, you have moments where the gravity of, of what's happened, the fact that this was done to Peter and Anne, this, this horrendous cruelty um, and deception and manipulation, um, it hits home often. But there, there was a moment, all right, in the court, because I think it was, um, it, it was a scene in the cross-examination when they're talking about the details of what was done, the exact details of what was done to Peter Farker. And there was just a moment after one of the takes where we all... I don't know, the gravity of it all kind of landed with us.